Now, in this tutorial, we'll talk about ACI components. We'll be introducing the function of leaf and spine switches, AV controllers, and many more. And for those who are new to this channel, welcome. I am your host, name is Dean Armada, and I'm the Cloud and Data Center. And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in cloud and data center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. Now, let's talk about the ACI components. Before we talk about components such as the switches, spines, endpoint devices, I'm going to introduce you to the two areas. Okay, now here in our topology, we have two spines and three leaves connected to web and database servers, connected to leaf one and leaf two. Now, the two areas that I mentioned are the fabric area, or sometimes you call it fabric space. And we also have the user space. Sometimes you call it endpoint. Okay. Endpoint or user. Now, obviously, the fabric, this is where leaves connects to the spines. And um, these are uh, Nexus uh, 9000 appliance, or I can be specific, Nexus 9000 that are ACI enabled devices. And on the endpoint or the user space side, these are the leaves, okay, connected to many different endpoints. Now, the endpoints can be servers, can be also routers or layer two devices or security appliances. It can be any appliance, even load balancers. Now, first, the endpoints. Now, the endpoints are the one who connected directly to the leaves, okay? And uh, how it works is like this. Well, before we talk about how it works, in this diagram, in our example, we want this web server to communicate to the database server. Now, here's how it works. Well, obviously, the web server will send the traffic to the upstream switch, which is the leaf one. Now, it doesn't matter if the packet is tagged as VLAN, VXLAN, and when I say VXLAN, this is the standard VXLAN. It can be NVI, NVGRE, okay, or it can be untagged as well. Okay, untagged means there's no VLAN, there's no VXLAN, uh, there is no uh, tag field on our Ethernet frame. Okay, so what will happen here is once the leaf receive uh, this traffic, it will remove the header okay and it will replace it by a new header this is what we call the uh sometimes we call it ivxlan but this is the aci vxlan so think about the standard eight um standard vxlan that we talked about in the previous video but of course there are more attributes because this is used inside our aci fabric so we have added uh aci proprietary attributes and again, this is what's happened. It will insert or add the VXLAN header, okay? Again, it doesn't matter uh, what uh, type of traffic that the server or the endpoint sends to the leaf. It, be, it will be replaced by a new header, which is the VXLAN header. Now, the packet flow is this. We're going to make it simple. Once the leaf receive it and as it sends it to the fabric it would know the aci know uh where is the destination okay we're going to talk about how the aci knows the destination on the next video but think about this spines knows everything once the leaf receive it it's either it already knows how to get there or it will consult to the spines okay but the goal here is uh, the VXLAN, the configuration or the actual operation will help us identify where is the destination endpoint is connected to. In this case, it's leaf 2. So basically, 
we will just drop the traffic to the destination and it will do the same in reverse format so the leaf 2 will remove the vxlan header and will replace it uh to a type of header uh used by the destination in this case the database server with an ip address of 192.168.20.4 so this can be also vlan vxlan and vgre or it can be also untagged now um let's talk about the topology specifically uh the discovery operation now what we have here is we have three leaves what if we add a new leaf okay so i'm gonna add a new leaf so we'll call this leaf four okay now leaf four will be also connected to spines one and two now this leaf four as we connect it to the, the, the both spines spine one and spine two and let's say we also have um available interface on the apic we're going to talk about the apic or the controller in a bit uh as long as leaf four is connected to spine one and spine two we will do or the aci will do the discovery what do you mean discovery now here's what's gonna happen so it will discover the new leaf, okay? So it will be discovered, leaf four, the new leaf. And this is through the use of uh, LLDP, okay? So through the use of LLDP, it will discover a leaf four. And uh, once it discovered the leaf four, you don't need to manually configure leaf four. So it will do the automated configuration. And when I say automated config, configuration uh it may start on the interface configuration so interface configuration okay and uh, there's many more so what are the uh, configuration that will be applied to leaf 4 once it is discovered well aside from interface configuration um for the interface configuration these are both physical and logical so these are the physical interface connected from leaf to spine also logical interface such as loopback so uh, by default it will apply a configuration on this interfaces interface connected spines by default it will use the 10.0.0.0 slash 16 uh, address block uh, but of course you can change this as well um, aside from ip address uh, of course it will automatically enable layer 3 ports on these interfaces uh, it will also enable dynamic routing Okay, uh, well, if you think about dynamic routing, you will think of OSPF, BGP, EIGRP. But here in ACI, it's neither. Not BGP, not OSPF. It's going to use, it's going to apply IS to IS. Okay, intermediate system to intermediate system. Okay, again, this is IS to IS, not ISIS guys. That's a different group. Now, this routing configuration will be automatically enabled okay and uh, as you add network and configurations uh it will automatically share it within the fabric now what i'm gonna do is i will also um uh, add other configurations as well so after dynamic routing protocol we will also automatically enable and configure vxlan remember vxlan uh is used when we send traffic over the fabric and you don't need to be a master okay or verse in vxlan configuration okay um because these are all configured automatically okay you don't need to be good in is to is vxlan as um as you add more leaves or more spines all of this configuration will be automatically added and this is good especially if you have a huge data center environment Let's say we have uh, eight spines and we have, let's say, 50 or 70 leaves. As you connect uh, these leaves and these are all automatically discovered, all configurations will be pushed to those leaves and spine switches. Now, you see this APIC, APIC 1, 2, and 3. Uh, these are the controllers. Okay, And when I say controller, this is where uh, you do the most of the configuration okay so the configuration is uh or hold by the controller 
same was with the policy what else statistics and it also act as the um the dhcp server as well so remember we apply ip address and then we push is to is bxlan configuration those configuration is actually came from the apic now a lot of people think that the apic the controller holds the control plane okay and this is um a comparison from the sdn or the open flow that we we talk about on the previous video but here in aci there is no control plane residing in our apic okay there's no control plane why is that because control plane is distributed to all switches okay so uh, spines leaves all of these have a distributed control plane now on, in the controller in our ap controller uh, you can manage this via oob or in band and uh, you can also do the configuration using cli or GUI. but most of the time you will use graphical user interface using your web browser okay next is um external devices now the external devices you can use most if not all devices it can be layer two it can be layer three devices and in our example what i'm gonna do is i will add a layer three device here okay this is obviously a router now uh, a router um is a layer three device okay and uh, most routers we have layer three ports now here in this example what we are going to do is we are going to configure this interface the leaf 4 interface that is directly connected to the router as a layer three port okay and once you can configure this as a layer three port uh you can do you know standard or normal layer three configurations such as um MTU actually MTU is layer two. Uh, you can also configure OSPF authentication and many more. Okay. Now also take note the interface is not only limited to layer three routed port. It can also be SVIs. It can also be a sub interface. Okay. Depends on your design configuration. Okay. Again, external device can be router, layer two, layer three. Layer two is like switches. And the layer three, uh, not only router, it can also be firewall, next generation firewall, and um, and uh, and um, uh, IPS as well, okay, or load balancers. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to provide an example where this switch will learn a network, and this network is behind this router. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the network. And this network will be shared by the router. So networks will be 172.16.20.0, 172.16.30.0. There you go. Now, what I'm going to do next is we are going to, let's say, configure OSPF uh, on both layer 4 and uh, the router. Okay. And assuming OSPF configuration is done properly on both devices, um, um we specify the network we specify the uh the, the the yeah the network configuration and uh, we uh we also add details assuming everything is configured correctly what will happen is this leaf okay leaf four which is directly connected to the router will learn all the 172.16 172.16 network okay so this network will be learned by leap four why because i should this is the network that is behind uh this router let's call this router one okay now in this specific scenario it's only leap four who learned these three networks okay and why is that because uh there's another process for other leaves to learn this network and this is through the use of spines Okay, now by default, Spines is not yet configured as a BGP route reflector. And this is what we're going to do. We are going to configure these two Spines as BGP route reflector. Okay, and when I say route reflector, that means it will learn the networks 
from leaves and it will also share these networks to other leaves. So spines learn networks, okay, and also share it to other leaves, okay, uh, big switches. Now, take note, um, BGP route reflector configuration is not by default added, so you have to add this manually or automatically as well. And you can choose how many spines that will participate as a BGP route reflector. Now, here's what's going to happen. Since this leaf learned the network, it will share it to the spines, in this case, spine 1 and spine 2. Now, spine 1 and spine 2 uh, depends on their model, Nexus um, 9300 or 9500. And assuming they are using the 9500 with um, six FAPIC modules, it can add up to or more than 1 million network host uh, entries to its hardware database. Okay, Once they added these entries, host network entries, they can now share those networks to other leaves. So in this case, leaf 1, leaf 2, leaf 3, they will now learn 172.16.10.0, 20.0, and 30.0. So that was just the very basic introduction of ACI components. We all talk about configuration constructs such as tenants, verf, bridge domain, EPGs, and many more in the next video.